And we're live. New topic. Uh, <laughs> this one to me is actually a pro-Trump article. So what's happening is people are getting off of food stamps. Illegal immigrants are getting off of food stamps because they're afraid they're going to get deported. And the article to me kind of reads like, oh, isn't it a shame? You know, it, mm -hmm. these like, just so you know, uh, it, like food stamps aren't actually tied to deportations. You don't have to be doing this, but they're like, yeah, I know technically, but I'm worried that I'm, I'm getting on a list. I'm an illegal immigrant who's getting food stamps and uh, I'm just going to stop taking food stamps because I'm afraid I'll get deported. And I think good, good, good. Yeah. Good. It shouldn't no be fucking a handout well, for you. It will stay on them if you want. It should be like, no, no, you're not a member of this country. You came here illegally, and now you're siphoning resources from the general population. That's not fair. Yeah, yeah. No. I, 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 and it's that sort of extreme like leftism that, that like that makes it hard to get on board with the Democrats, right? Because they're literally like talking about the exact thing that a lot of us hate. It's this sort of handout society for anyone and everyone with the with their hands open. And, and, and I'm not a nationalist per se. I, I we, 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 but Jesus, at some point we do have to take care of our own. Uh, you know, the people who are paying into the system should reap the benefits of that system. And then if there's a surplus afterwards, then good, we'll be yeah. all the more prepared to help the, the weak and the impoverished. But let's look out for ourselves, make ourselves as strong as we can, and then we'll just be more charitable than we ever could have been before. Yeah. The United States is insanely charitable. They give yeah. higher percentages of their uh, income than any other Western nation, like by well, far. People here are, are very charitable for the most part. This is not charity, though. This is like you're, you came here, you, you committed a felony by coming here illegally, and then you set up into our system and are now taking from it and not giving into it. And that's not the way countries work. You know, like you can't, if I went into Sweden or Germany or any other country and started getting benefits when I, I was there illegally and they found out, they would have every right in the world to say, get the fuck out of here. No, you can't be here. You're not allowed to be here. That's not how countries work. This isn't, you know, 3,000 years ago before borders were drawn. Like, you, no, you can't do that. You gotta leave Sweden. You're not here legally. Like, what do you feel like a leech? If you move to France and immediately sign up for some fucking bullshit program that, that like, because you suddenly fit into some category because you're a single man uh, newly in this country and uh, suddenly you qualify for benefits, wouldn't you just feel like a fucking cockroach? I feel like and a I'd leech? have to pay it back. Yeah. Like, like, you know what, Sweden? Invest in me. I get it. I just got here. You're helping me get on my feet, but trust me, I'm going to be an awesome taxpayer, you know, someday. Like it, with that mindset, I can understand it. And what they but should say is, the "Come back when here. you are. Come back when you are." Well, I, I guess that that was the invest in me part. Come like back I, legally. I'm not going to yeah, get yeah, on yeah. my feet without being here, you know. So, so I'll tell you what, you know, two years of food stamps, then I'm going to pay you more than you ever paid me. Like that, that would be great if, like, you as an engineer are being brought into Sweden, and they're like, "Yeah, we really want Mr. Game Attack. <laughs> <laughs> He's an engineer," or however they sound. I hate those people. And <laughs> right there with those the people, Irish. Those are the same people who will like talk down to us about like racial issues when they live in a, a in a vanilla country with like no. Only white Kyle, people. Kyle, like, you like, backwards the ones. Americans. You don't even know what you're talking about. I met. Three black people last year, all of them from the United States, and they tell me horror stories of how they are treated. I, I've never met a black person here because we don't allow that. But um, uh, if you ask any one of the three million white people who live in our tiny little country, they will tell you that you are all racist. Like, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, okay, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking. And same thing with Canada. Where Canada's like, you know, talking shit about stuff like, oh, you, you guys down there with your racism and your and your your shit, you know, it's like you, I, I, I don't know, I'm I'm so tired of how much America gets shit on by so many members of other countries, and if you say anything about, you know, but and, and obviously like Kyle making fun of Ireland, it's not really true. No, like, yeah, I, I I love Ireland. I like the accent, the food, hate, the whole thing. Act, yeah, you I'm don't actually hate Sweden. Like you just we give them shit. Because I feel like no one gives America shit like America does, right? Like, when Ferguson goes down, we don't bury that. We're like, America has a problem that we need to address. There's a thing that's wrong here, right? Regardless of what you think the solution is or whatever. Uh, other countries are like, no, we're awesome. What? Not don't pay attention to that over there. We don't have any troubles. Like, really? You just You got, like, suicide bombers Oh, do, do you have any that? proof of the 1,200 people who were raped by migrants? 
other than all the pictures, <laughs> hmm? the, the, other than all the pictures that we outlawed because we don't keep track of who, what race of a rapist is because the statistics are a bit bigoted in that way. Um, but you but know, yeah, uh, in, in places in Europe, they have like Milo will talk about the the huge influence of the on on the Muslim culture of the Muslim culture on what was there before. But the countries themselves just kind of bury that. India, India is one that I know really well, so I talk about them a lot. They have this like huge portion of their population that's just untouchable and completely broken lives in filth and they're yeah. they're hardly even living a human lifestyle just yeah, squalor, yeah and uh but they don't talk about that they, they they look the other way when the plane flies in over that over that stuff um but america if we have problems you know we freaking put it on tv and make it a national debate and um you know, they, they, so I, I like that about America. I, I feel like it, it gets some problems solved and, and when you put them on, on TV. Yeah. I, there's this old, um, I think it was maybe post-World War, I don't remember when it was, there's this, ah, I found it. I fucking found it. Uh, l let me play a second of this to make sure I found it. This is, this is really good. It's good. Yeah. So, the way I remember it, this guy was a Canadian radio guy mm -hmm. and, uh, this is him on America. Uh, this is him talking about America. Uh, um, and it's very good. It's five minutes, but it, this is a strong way to it. close the show. This okay. is a strong way to close out. Especially if you're American out there. Listen to this. <laughs> uh, I'm queued up at zero. Me, Me too. too. Three, two, one, play. Do you guys have audio in the beginning? No. Okay. It's coming. The United States dollar took another pounding on German, French, and British exchanges this morning, hitting the lowest point ever known in West Germany. It has declined there by 41% since 1971, and this Canadian thinks it's time to speak up for the Americans as the most generous and possibly the least appreciated people in all the world. As long as 60 years ago, when I first started to read newspapers, I read of floods on the Yellow River and the Yangtze. Well, who rushed in with men and money to help? The Americans did, that's who. They have helped control floods on the Nile, the Amazon, the Ganges, and the Niger. Today, the rich bottom land of the Mississippi is underwater, and no foreign land has sent a dollar to help. Germany, Japan, and to a lesser extent, Britain and Italy were lifted out of the debris of war by the Americans who poured in billions of dollars and forgave other billions in debts. None of those countries is today paying even the interest on its remaining debts to the United States. When the franc was in danger of collapsing in 1956, it was the Americans who propped it up, and their reward was to be insulted and swindled on the streets of Paris. And I was there, I saw that. When uh, distant cities are hit by earthquake, it's the United States that hurries in to help. Managua, Nicaragua is one of the most recent examples. So far this spring, 59 American communities have been flattened by tornadoes. Nobody has helped. The Marshall Plan, the Truman Policy, all pump billions upon billions of dollars into discouraged countries. And now newspapers in those countries are writing about the decadent war-mongering Americans. Now, I'd like to see just one of those countries that is gloating over the erosion of the United States dollar build its own airplane. Come on now, you, let's hear it. Does any country in the world have a plane to equal the Boeing jumbo jet, the Lockheed TriStar, or the Douglas 10? If so, why don't they fly them? Why do all international lines except Russia fly American planes? Why does no other land on Earth even consider putting a man or a woman on the moon? You talk about Japanese technocracy and you get radios. You talk about German technocracy and you get automobiles. You talk about American technocracy and you find men on the moon not once but several times and safely home again. You talk about scandals and the Americans put theirs right in the store window for everybody to look at. Even the draft dodgers are not pursued and hounded. They're right here on our streets in Toronto. Most of them, unless they're breaking Canadian laws, are getting American dollars from Ma and Pa at home to spend up here. When the Americans get out of this bind, 
as they will, who could blame them if they said to hell with the rest of the world? Let somebody else buy the bonds. Let somebody else build or repair foreign dams or design foreign buildings that won't shake apart in earthquakes. When the railways of France and Germany and India were breaking down through age, it was the Americans who rebuilt them. When the Pennsylvania Railroad or the New York Central went broke, nobody loaned them an old caboose. Both of them are still broke. I can name to you 5,000 times when the Americans raced to the help of other people in trouble. Can you name to me even one time when someone else raced to the Americans in trouble? I don't think there was outside help even during the San Francisco earthquake. Our neighbors have faced it alone, and I'm one Canadian who is damn tired of hearing them kicked around. They'll come out of this thing with their flag high, and when they do, they're entitled to thumb their noses at the lands that are gloating over their present trouble. I hope Canada is not one of these. But there are many smug, self-righteous Canadians. And finally, the American Red Cross was told at its 48th annual meeting in New Orleans this morning that it was broke. This year's disaster, with the year less than half over, has taken it all, and nobody, but nobody, has helped. I thought that was good, and I and I thought that the part about us putting our scandals in the store for, uh, front mem- uh, window uh, was was relevant after what you had said. Yeah, that was. Exactly I really like that. Yeah, that's really powerful. I like that a lot. I think that was uh, that's from like the early uh, '80s or or something. It looked yeah, like, it like was that in 2003. Too. Yeah, the video is, but the Cana- the audio of the Canadian gentleman. Uh, I think good old Canadians. Older. Yeah, because he's you know he's referencing East Germany oh, and such. Oh, it was from um, but, 1973. But, mm, yeah, quite old. Uh, but still relevant today. There you go. Uh, 